Hey, it's Josh, and you're listening to The Other Show. I'm telling you, like, I just had my head right in that bag for probably a good five or ten minutes. You went to Colorado again, didn't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this definitely sounds like a Vegas thing. Yeah, were you running a shipment for somebody? <laughs> no, 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 no. To open a duffel bag. Did they call you a mule? Was this at the gym again? <laughs> <laughs> no. I learned my lesson on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I were just guessing at this point. No, 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 no. What? So my wife just went to Disneyland last week, right? Oh, and uh-huh. she took you, right? Right? You were anniversary. No, 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 no. This was this was a this was a girls' trip only because oh, you know, last time she went on a girls' trip to Disneyland, I kind of crashed it. Um, yeah, okay. And you know, well, I mean, it, there was a happy ending at the end of that, but. No, she she came back. She brought me a souvenir, right. and she brought me back the coolest looking Disney shirt. You know, because I'm I'm huge into like the Hawaiian shirts and everything. Yeah, and she saw one there that she just knew it had to be it had to be for me. It was a it's a shag shirt. So if you know mm-hmm. any of the Disney artists, I don't shag is probably one of my favorite. Uh, just Josh, I don't want to know what you do in those shirts. <laughs> Stop it. But if that's what you like, then go for it. So this is just a Disney branded Hawaiian shirt. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Hawaiian okay. shirt. Um, Shag is one of my favorite artists. Yeah. The, he does a lot of Disney stuff, works with Disney. But my wife uh, brought it back. She had it in a bag. She stored it in her hotel room. Mm-hmm. And just in the, I guess, in the two or three days that it was sitting in the hotel room, it like soaked up the smell oh that's not good of the hotel like it, it smelled like, like a, a subway n- 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 <laughs> no 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 like are you telling me that subway smell like um hooker and blow i mean if your name is jared but <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> too soon too soon <laughs> but no it it smelled musty it had like yeah. a secondhand smoke smell to it and it just brought me back to childhood like it's... you're still not convincing me you're not a mule <laughs> yeah and i'm wondering like uh we all know of the uh hotel right the, the your family's house where all of your siblings have lived right. i mean obviously yeah. but even in their adulthood why does that smell remind you of your childhood uh, when it's a hotel or motel smell well because hotel motel holiday in because you know? we <laughs> when we would go down to southern california for a family yeah. vacation because we had a lot of family down there we would stop at these motels, whether it was like St. George, Vegas, Barstow, wherever. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, being a family of of six kids and everything, like my parents had to kind of travel cheap, and so it was these motels, and usually it was the secondhand smoke ones because those were cheaper. And Josh, so it did, don't don't did, tell me travel cheap because you don't travel cheap until you stay at a. KOA in Las Vegas, and then your hotel plans are Uncle Tim's. <laughs> oh, okay, so my dad had a little money, but not much. I mean, he had to stretch it, you know. Over, you know, did six your kids. did your mom also tell you to run into the room at night because she lied about how many people were actually staying in the room? Oh, absolutely. Like we we all had okay because to... there were five kids in our family, and we... it was the same story. Oh yeah, because we all had to hide in. <laughs> in the van until yes, in the we car. checked in, right? And then it was, yeah. and then we were like going through the back door or you know some like shady pets. corner. Like she's sneaking pets into the room, uh-huh. but it's her six children. Yep. Uh, my mom was the exact same, <laughs> and and really it was just to our own detriment, right? Because it was one room with seven people. Exactly. I don't know how that worked. I slept on the yeah. floor a lot when I was. A well, kid. no wonder you have this nostalgic smell of grossness, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was right there on the floor. <laughs> That's where bed bugs are born. But no, seriously though, like I, I, it just brought me back to those memories as a kid. And even just the other day, I was walking out of Walmart and I smelt that uh, that flavored like nicotine smell. What flavor that you would get? Oh, I I don't know what it is. It's just it brought me back to my childhood of. You know, Disneyland, it, Lagoon. Are these smells that you seek out or just sm- smells that catch you off guard and you're like, oh, I'm instantly transported back? Um, 
I yes, sort of. I I okay. do like every time I walk into a casino in Vegas or any time I I go to Disneyland, I I hope that I smell that. But now that mm. secondhand smoke is is so demonized in this country, and mm-hmm. uh, I believe Disneyland is is smoke is tobacco free now. Oh, is it? I'm pretty sure Lagoon I th- is. I think they still have corners, dedicated corners. Uh, the corners that I knew or I remembered like a few years ago, they're not there anymore. Is but that like it, the Dumbo corner, like where they have like all the old school cartoons and they leave like a sensitivity warning? <laughs> hey, come here, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can let your kids in here but just warning you that maybe they would be offended it's, it's where they put like dick tracy and careful your Ro- yeah roger rabbit yeah <laughs> wait dick tracy was toontown. just me toontown toontown is all about secondhand smoke <laughs> <laughs> wait do you think dick tracy's in who framed roger rabbit i don't know i th- i just remember <laughs> watching that as a kid and being absolutely bored out of my mind what about my madonna's in there in her glory days oh like for the four uh, days that she was in her glory days just like a overripe <laughs> banana whoa. <laughs> whoa normally i'm the one making those jokes <laughs> Wait, okay okay so you like these smells josh oh, love them love them gasoline at a gas station i mean i could probably hang out at the local holiday and and just smell everybody gassing up but you know i'm pretty sure that if i did i'd have it a restraining order but no i i get what you're saying because secondhand smoke that it, that is the smell of the 80s and 90s i mean lagoon i'm pretty sure lagoon's signature smell is like one part nicotine one part chlorine and then 1.5 part urine Oh, you mean at Laguna Beach? No, it permeates the whole park. <laughs> unless, unless you go to the back wooded pavilion area. Yeah. And then you throw on a dash of steamed hamburger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And maybe some KFC buckets Oh, yeah, as KFC well. buckets. Mm-hmm. And so it seems like your smells, your sensory, the, whatever that is, mm-hmm. the olfactory senses, you seek out kind of the double wide sense. Oh, yeah. If that's what I'm catching on to. This isn't like going into like um you know uh, a certain kind of like uh, store for lotion, right? No, no, uh, no. oh Simply no, Simply Works or whatever. No, yeah, no, which which is uh, hun- like I there's some smells for me that are like candy, right? Like mm-hmm. vanilla bean Noel lotion um, that you can buy at Bath and Body Works, which, which is why I brought that up. Oh, I was gonna say like my my wife would be right there with you at Bath and Body Works and yeah, and all that because uh-huh. that's her jam. But like for me, no, I I I want the smell of the secondhand smoke and give me the secondhand smoke. So do we need to go to like, go to like La Quinta for like your birthday and just kind of lay on the ground <laughs> it, it just, and meditate? It, oh, dude, I would be in heaven. Actually, Ken, I think for his birthday, we need to take him to Vegas. Yeah. But only hit the sketchiest and skeeviest of casinos. Oh, we're going to Fremont Street then for sure. Oh, yeah. No, that I, I love Fremont Street just for that reason alone. Yeah, it because it smells it like ve- the Vegas I remember. I'm glad that's right. the only reason you love Fremont Street. I mean, obviously, I have stories about Fremont Street, but we don't need to go there right you now. You also have stories so. about Laguna Beach. Which ones are worse? Oh, um, listen, I don't want to get into that. Nudity is involved in both cases. I'll just say that. <laughs> 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 but one I was much younger and one I was too old. So uh wait that sounds wrong. <laughs> and I still don't know which one is which you're talking that you're talking about. Yeah. I don't even know where to go from there. Save me. No, I, I get what you're saying. Like, you're gonna need a lawyer. Speaking of like smells and like water parks, for example, uh-huh. it is like a certain kind of chlorinated water that does it. Oh yeah. Uh like I like, for example, Laguna Beach. I worked there for years. Mm-hmm. It's very familiar to me. Uh, the Bountiful Bubble back in the day. Oh yeah, is also oh. which hasn't been around for twenty years. Uh, pretty much. Um, yeah, fifteen twenty years. That if I were to smell that again or anywhere else, yeah, I'd be like, I would be transported. You know, going there for family home evening. I'm fourteen years old. <laughs> you know, I'm getting some ice cream right after. That would that would take me right back. Yeah, no, I know the exact smell you're talking about with the Bountiful Bubble because we used to have our my my family. My mom's from Bountiful, so we would mm-hmm. we'd have our family reunions right there at the park, right outside the bubble, and we'd go ice skating or swimming 
every year during it. So it's like, yeah, the, the smell is chlorine and then like old refrigerator smell from the ice rink. Yeah. Old refrigerator. Um, oh. that was like kind of like the uh, stinky skates. Yeah. Basically you'd get that smell coming in as well. And it's not even a bad one. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's the old refrigerator smell. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now I totally get why Cherry went into the refrigerator on Punky Brewster. She just wanted to recapture okay. that smell. You're bringing up that episode, the only memorable episode of Punky Brewster. It scarred me for life. Have you done it, though? Have you actually done the challenge? Oh, absolutely. Did you get stuck or did you push it right open? Yeah, I pushed it right open. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, I'm like, they're full of crap. <laughs> 80s just wanted to scare us with all of these afternoon specials. Yeah, I was worried about Wells in the ground all the time. I didn't want to be the next baby Jessica. Oh my gosh, baby Jessica. You completely lost me on that one. <laughs> Spencer has no idea. <laughs> See? And you call yourself an 80s kid. Late 80s. Very late 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Spencer, I don't even want to try to like butcher the story, but you may have to look that, I'll one, tell you up. that one But that makes me wonder, you know, this wasn't one of my original derailing questions I was going to ask. But this is the derailing question I'm going to ask now. I wonder what... I like that you plan these out. I do. <laughs> like Josh metic- meticulously plans out the show notes and where we want to go and what he wants to talk about. And then it's my whole job to find out how I can counteract all of them. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> You're an agent yeah. of chaos. Okay, what's your but question, what, Spencer? So my question is, what other fears were we instilled with as children that ended up being nothing? Like... Growing up, I thought stop, drop, and roll was going to oh. be something I'd need like on a daily basis. That's one, for sure. And you've never been lit on fire, right? So you haven't really tested that theory, Spencer. Yeah, no, I, I've never been on fire that I know of. Um, I think, hmm. well, obviously the quicksand thing, right? That's oh, something yeah. that we all kind of assumed. Hey, but no, there, there was a hiker here in Utah just a week or two ago that encountered quicksand. What? Yeah, they encountered, and they lost it. They lost a shoe. Hold on. It was it mud. <laughs> like, what do you mean they lost a shoe? I mean, it's been a very wet, you know, spring. Yeah. But wait, so is quick is quicksand real? Yeah. Is this something well, I need to be scared is, of again? It is real. It's real, but it's not a big threat. You just kind of float on yeah. it and you're good. And you just don't fight. Because that's how you know, that's how like like water buffaloes get stuck no. in them. I feel like you're going back to like when you were nine. And you're like, here's a fun fact about quicksand. No, Kent, when you are stuck in quicksand, you just need to give up to that sweet surrender and... What? (laughs) Excuse me? Accept your fate. (laughs) Wait, you're saying I should be the news story to scare all the kids in the new generation. Artax! (laughs) Artax! Shame on you. I'm quite disappointed right now. But, I mean, that's still a legit fear. But, yeah, I mean, there are... Gosh, I mean... Quicksand's still a legit fear for you? Well, after seeing that news article, yeah. Hmm. I uh, I think I was, well, I don't even want to make light of this, but I was, uh, uh, you know, with Stranger Danger, I definitely never wore a belt with my name on it. Oh, yeah. Right? Because they always told you to never wear clothes with your name on it. I don't remember that. Did you ever hear that? I remember that one. Yeah. And there, were, there was a movie they showed us in school that was like this alien kid that was a latchkey kid. And... Don't tell anybody that you have a key to your house or don't display your key because then they'll know you're home alone after school. I would say that, you know, being kidnapped, Mm -hmm. like walking from from school or or to school, I think was probably my biggest fear. But then again, I'm like, I was a I was a big kid. I, you know, nobody was kidnapping me. (laughs) (laughs) Granted, granted, all of my friends could outrun me, but, you know. The the effort effort reward there was not too great. (laughs) No, no, it wasn't. We can't even laugh about this. Like, it's just, we can't. Because it probably actually happens. So, you know, it's probably not a great thing. I'm sure there's an after school special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember other fears I had, but that was kind of it. Oh, so there was this one time, I think I was in third grade, second or third grade. Let's say second, just because I want to make myself sound younger. (laughs) But um, my teacher said, never sit backwards in your chairs at your desk. And I still, this is like a core memory for me, which is weird. And she said, never sit backwards on your chair. Like there will be like consequences. I did once and the fire alarm went off. 
<laughs> and I legit <laughs> thought that there was no fire, but I thought that by doing that, it automatically set off the school alarm, and we all had to go outside because I broke a rule like that. Like, I was terrified. Did I ever sit backwards on my chair again? I sure didn't. You know, I did think that there was a higher probability of getting murdered in the woods than there actually was, probably. Oh, uh, or doing Bloody Mary in the bathroom mm, stall yeah. when I was in second or third grade. Uh, excuse me, still a fear, by the way. <laughs> I Every time I walk by a mirror at night, I say to myself, Bloody Mary be gone, because I am not willing to deal with the consequence if it's still real. Do you guys not? What, did you see something when you were a kid? Uh, no, but that's all I need to know. That That's a thing. If you see something, say something. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we're we're all into the paranormal here. I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to poke Bloody Mary with a stick and hope that I don't get bit back. You know? Same thing. I sleep with my closet door closed because a boogeyman might be in there. Um, no, I'm, I'm the same way with doors. Like, I Okay, have to, thank you. I have... To, I have to have a, a closed door, like even my bedroom door. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, it has to. Otherwise, like the boogeyman or, you know, Jared from Subway is going to come and kidnap me, you know? <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> like, got to, you know, got to protect myself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not quite a foot long, but 10 inches. So, yeah. <laughs> That's being generous. Yeah, it's probably, what, eight and a half inches? Let's be real. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> no, Josh, it's funny. Like, even now that you're married, do you still sleep with the door closed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what does your wife say? Did she say, oh, that's fine? Like, I, did you have to explain it to her? No. I mean, it's it's not locked because we don't have locks on any of the doors. You would feel watched if you left the door open. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Huh. Um, the door, the closet door, um, like, I just, yeah, I can't. Really? So mm-hmm. can I challenge you right now to do that nope. tonight? Nope. And nope. see what happens? No, 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 because... Jared will come and get me. Jared's in prison, Josh, and he's not getting out any time I don't think soon. I should get crowd for this Bloody Mary thing anymore. Because I feel like... It... Yeah, and Bloody Mary is dead, so, you know? <laughs> so, Spencer, is do you have anything, or are you just tougher than we are? Or are you just, like, trying to be cooler? No, I already said my things. What's your thing? I was afraid of getting murdered in the woods. Yeah, and you, you might. I, I mean, By wild animals. Yeah. yeah, but not by an escaped prisoner. Yeah, There's sure. not even a high-security prison near us. Well, me. There's one by Josh. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. I'm still not going into the woods by myself for fun. No. Like, like that is something that I'm like, oh, that's you know, still a little weird. And that's called hiking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh, I, actually, I'm, I'm the same way. I, like, I, I mean, I love trail running. I love hiking and, and that. But mm-hmm. if it comes to anything like overnight out in the woods forget yeah. about it camping forget about it like see i freaking love camping. i oh no in a trailer like i i mean i don't know how i am an eagle scout other than your mom got it my mother yeah. i was gonna say mm-hmm. your mom mom's an eagle scout same yeah. yeah i can say honestly that my eagle scout is my own yeah oh spencer you hero <laughs> national hero That's right oh <laughs> thank you for gracing us with your presence i got it for a girl <laughs> But not my mom. Did you do like a soup drive for your, you know, for your project? Nope. I actually set everything up and then went home and told my mom when everything was done that what weekend it was going to be. I mean, good job. Where's this girl now, Spencer? Oh, Oh, speaking of lies that we were told. (laughs) Oh, yeah. She's married to somebody completely different. (laughs) Um, A librarian. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, speaking (laughs) of lies we were told um, as children and we believed. Where are all my promotions from having an Eagle Scout? Like, I was told that it looked good on my resume. Mm-hmm. Not once has it ever been brought up in an interview. I uh, I kept my card because you get like a credit card yeah. that, you know, is not a credit card. And I kept that thing in my wallet because I'm like, uh, when, I think when I was like 23, I'm like, yeah, when I get like a, a future father-in-law, I'm going to show this to him. He's going to be real impressed. Just as a joke, but I also like meant it as well. So, yeah, but it doesn't give you any benefit. No one cares, especially not in Utah. I mean, <laughs> the question, uh, the question I have is: Is it still on your resume? No, it's not. Hold on, I'm going to update my dating profile real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Technical sales rep for an ad tech company. You know, knowing how to tie a clove hitch is going to make a huge difference in my job. 
Spent, uh, so Kenny, you know, you're updating your, your dating profile here. Are you uh -huh. putting that you are an Eagle Scout? Or are you going to put a picture of you in your Scout outfit? Or are you taking that you're an Eagle Scout off? If you want, if you guys want a picture for social media, I will send it over of me getting my Eagle Scout award. I think I might have one and too. I was 18 years old. Uh -huh. It was like last minute you could get yeah. it. Because I just didn't care up we're, until that last minute. We're right? the same kid, exactly, that, that's exactly. When I got so, that, but I got it because I was two merit badges away for like four years. Yeah, and then this girl that I wanted to ask to a dance said, "I won't go out with you unless you get your Eagle Scout." Wow, that's that's a that's a yellow flag right there at the very least. Was, no wonder she's married to a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little anal retentive. I, I had mm -hmm. those last two merit badges done and my project set up by that weekend. Okay. I mean, that's motivation. I mean, sometimes that's what you need. She must have been a looker. Okay, guys. So I'm updating my profile. It says, uh, uh, girl dad, movie critic, uh, still sleeps with the closet door closed, and um, Eagle Scout. Okay. How do we feel about that? Uh, dude, you're going you're gonna to be raking in dates next week. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. you need to add retired Laguna Beach Beach lifeguard. Oh, really? My glory days of when I was a teenager? Yeah. Oh yeah, like I mean, it's like it's kind of like Baywatch esque. That's true, right? Like a kind of thing. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be like I got skin cancer once when I was seventeen years old, basically <laughs> standing out in the sun all day long. Okay. You know, okay, I'm gonna derail the conversation again. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think we had a point for the show, but now it's become this. Yeah, no, I love that. This is the second time we're having this conversation, like the same talking points. But it's a completely different conversation. <laughs> it's like we're not repeating anything really. Oh. No, no, we're not. And th yeah, this is the second time that we have attempted to record this episode because we had some legit technical difficulties. Josh's internet. Yeah, my internet is a little spotty. So if And yet here we are with new tangents. <laughs> yes. So Spencer, what do you got? <laughs> well, I could go down. Ooh, is it a choose your adventure? Yeah. 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 I a gate uh okay. door three. Door three. Door three. Okay. No, you gotta vote for with Kent. Okay, okay. Door one, Wales. Door two, June movies, and door three, smells. We're going to continue the smells. I think I'm done with smells. Uh, I like that not any of those doors were uh, voicemails. Oh, shoot. We have those. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I mean, if, do, if we have time for whales, we can do whales, but I feel I, like that's going to be an hour by itself. It really would be. I mean, that could be a whole episode. Let's be honest. Because... We're opening the whale door. We're opening the whale okay, door. We're... The blowhole is open. We're open. <laughs> we're... It's it's open. No. Okay. I mean, this this has been pretty well established by many of the listeners. I'm a huge like fan of the whales, right? Yeah, we know zoo books. Zoo books. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything from the beluga whale, the narwhal, the killer whale, the false killer whale, the sperm Wait, whale, the false killer whale. Yeah, it's yeah. I still don't know it, why they call it the false killer it's whale. The attempted murder whale. <laughs> say like the maiming <laughs> whale, <right>? aggravated <laughs> assault <laughs> whale. <laughs> oh. I don't know if you've heard this in the news lately. In the Mediterranean, just uh, right off uh, the coast of Spain, I, I don't know what they call that area. The uh, Gigalabar, or uh, I no, I totally butchered it because it's Spanish. <laughs> Gigalabar, yes, Gigalabar. There is a pod of killer whales that are attacking and sinking boats. Oh. yeah, and and the thing is, is scientists are trying to figure out why, and what's happening, or what they they think happened is there's this killer whale, the matriarch Gladys, who had some traumatizing thing happen with a boat. I mean, she could have ran into it, a uh, mm -hmm. propeller, something, something sure. happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because of that, she has made it essentially her life mission to attack the uh, yachts and boats and everything. And she's teaching the pod and the younger generation of whales to attack and sink these these ships and they've sunk three ships so far what why is this so cool i know i should be worried about the people that are probably having like the most terrifying day of their lives but this sounds so cool so so what essentially what they did um this last attack mm -hmm. uh, and i'll just kind of read this really briefly from from an article but they said in the early hours of thursday a group of orcas broke the rudder 
pierced the hull of a boat after ramming into in, into the boat on its way to Gigla Bar or whatever it's called, prompting its crew of four to contact Spanish authorities for help, and and it, essentially uh, they they had to deploy a rapid response vessel and a helicopter carrying uh, this other vessel to to essentially uh, get the crew off of this other boat. Uh, as it sank because uh, the, the these killer whales sank the boat and they're they're learning this behavior and for whatever reason they're sinking boats okay, so no 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 so i'm i don't want to derail you kent but i i think there's something bigger going on here because whales are sinking boats they're coordinating to sink boats mhm and i just read this story I think whales are going to war. Nature's fighting back, Kent. <laughs> listen, no, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Russian spy whale spotted off Swedish coast. It says Russian, but based on this orca pod, this may just be the whales. <clears throat> A beluga whale previously accused of spying for the Russian naval. Previously, this isn't new. Accused? Yeah. <laughs> Like, did they on, put it? Did okay. they interrogate it? <laughs> and they're like, was it on trial? They're like, let him go. It's, He's innocent. We think he's got his own trauma from the hog. <laughs> the several meter long white whale was first sighted a few years ago, wearing a camera harness near Norway, fueling suspicion it was being used for espionage. It has since been nicknamed Valdemir, combining the words Val, it, whale in Norwegian, and the common Russian first name Vladimir. It was first spotted in 2019. The whale's harness was fitted to the base with a base for a small camera with equipment St. Petersburg printed on the plastic strap. The biologists who found Valdemir were able to remove the fixed harness. The Norwegian director of fishery speculated at the time that the whales had escaped from an enclosure where it was possibly trained by the Russian Navy, since it was accustomed to human company and would approach ships. On Sunday, Valdemir was found near Hunesbrandestrand in West Sweden, <laughs> further south than its first appearance in 2019. Valdemir has been moving in a southern direction quicker than its normal pace. It's meeting up with the orca pod. He is meeting up with the orca pod. Listen, you with his information. I, I I'm I'm there with you on this one. L- man. Listen, they say we don't know why it's moving fast at this moment. Acknowledge that Valdemir's quest to find the pod or a partner could be one of the possible reasons. What they're saying? It's a horny whale. You know, it's hormones urging to find a mate. No, it's trying to find the, the orca pod because it has information on the Norwegian <laughs> ship's weaknesses. Wait, so this this white whale is going to unite with the orcas or fight against them? It's like Planet of the Apes in water. <laughs> Utahns are safe. Don't worry. It's the brine shrimp we have to worry about. <laughs> Listen, yeah, the brine flies and the brine shrimp are coming our way, I think. <laughs> Oh, would that be the worst way to die? Choking on a flood of brine shrimp? What? I can't. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Talking about smells, holy crap! <laughs> but this, it is kind of fascinating, though. I mean, the the spying whale is a little ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, and talk about like the world's worst like spy. It has Saint Petersburg on the strap. Like, yeah, yeah w- way to hide that. <laughs> or, or is it the world's best spy because it was originally from the orcas? And they put it there for misdirection. There you go. But see, no, it's it's nuts though. Like these whales, I'm just reading through more of the the their mo on attacking these boats. Like one of the whales will stop the rudder. Like they'll damage the rudder, while the other what? Uh, bigger whales ram the boat. What? And then they and then they're teaching the younger ones to ram the boat as well. So it's orchest- orchestrated. <laughs> I wish the listeners could see Josh light up when he realized what he had just said. It was I'm not funny. I love that so much. <laughs> well done, sir. But that's, I mean, that's what it is, right? It's an orchestrated yeah. attack. Uh-huh. And they're teaching these younger whales they're to to fear these boats like it's life or death if they don't how long until like they hire hunters right like in all the movies whether it's mm-hmm. jaws or any other crappy shark movie after that anaconda there's a, 
anaconda if there's a menace mm-hmm. in the water mm-hmm. they get you know these supreme hunters uh, much of the, them are fodder for the, the animal mm-hmm. but do they start hunting these orcas down i i kind of hope not no no i i need to see where this goes yeah like watch it closely because i'm pretty sure valdemir was doing reconnaissance for this orca squad, and that's why they know to hit the rudders. <laughs> and the thing is, is do we really want to release Lolita, the the lonely killer whale from the Miami Aquarium? Do we really want to release her out into the ocean? Wait, where does Lolita come into this? What what are you talking about? <laughs> no, because they're they're releasing her. They want her. They've they uh, this organization has bought her to release her back into the wild. Okay. But do we really want to do that? Because she's got inside information. Okay, hold on. Let's let's pitch a movie here. What's she gonna do? Is she gonna sell like the Miami Dolphins offensive scheme to Bill Belichick? Is Bill Belichick behind all of this? Here's what happened, right? Like we all grew up loving Shamu. Mm-hmm. All the Shamus out there. Mm-hmm. Eventually, they had to release these Shamus, the ones that sur- survived. And obvi- obviously, there's been a lot of controversy mm-hmm. um, having to do with Sea World. Maybe they had to release some. These escaped Shamu. Shaman, shaman. (laughs) (laughs) They have now formed a group of survivors, a pod, pod, if you will, Mm -hmm. and they are getting revenge on uh, apparently Spain currently. And Norway's next. I love this movie. It's got a star, Jason Statham. Um, No, here's the thing, Josh. uh, Josh, you and I riding dolphins as we fight these orca. And Van Halen is playing in the background. Yes. <laughs> Although, let's be real, the dolphins, I don't want to mess with dolphins. I think if anyone's getting revenge, it's dolphins. Oh, yeah. They so have. They're maybe the... they'll betray us at the end of the movie. No, dolphins are the masterminds behind all of this. They're the ones teaching the whales what to do and sitting Truly. back, letting them take the blame. Yeah. Listen, if sharks are afraid of an animal, I should be afraid too. Someone call sci fi. No, we want this to be legit. We don't want it to go straight to the Asylum movie studio. Or VHS. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. That will happen eventually. Yeah. And we don't even need to, like, give these orcas any drugs, like uh, oxy orcas or anything like that, right? <laughs> like the, the popular cocaine bear thing. These are manipulators. These are dangerous creatures. And I'm so into <gasps> this. Manipulator? I'll be researching it all night. Dangerous creatures? The perfect yeah. person to star in producing this? Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No. He's in bad movies. So we need it to be good. Um, He'll punch an orc in the face. <laughs> what about Jason Moa, Mo, Moana? Mo- or <laughs> Jason Moana. <laughs> I know. I, I listen. Gosh. Is it Jason Moana? <laughs> this show is a freaking know. mess. <laughs> Spencer, it's your fault. I think it's time to take some phone calls. Let's do some phone calls. Hey guys, proud Disney mom here, Tanya Budge. I just wanted to call in and share my news. <laughs> As most of the listeners know and you guys know, my daughter joined the Disney College program last year and then extended her stay. And I am so excited that I get to fly out in just a couple of weeks and go pick her up. And she's coming home. I don't know if she's really excited about that, but I am super excited to have her back home. We'll see how long it lasts. She's going to come home, work on her master's program and then she's talking about moving back down to Florida because I think she's going to miss her boyfriend a lot more than she's going to miss me. So anyway, I'm excited to have her home. Thank you for giving me a platform to share my excitement with everybody. I'm excited. I hope you're all excited for me. And I love listening to the show. Keep up what you're doing. Thanks, guys. Okay, first off, Tanya, this is a perfect platform and exactly what Josh's voicemail is for. So let's all celebrate with her. Yay! Yay! You guys did not sound very happy. I was snapping. I was snapping out of and, excitement. And I raised I raised the roof with my hands. To be fair, I have a sleeping baby in the, the room next to me, a toddler. Kent has two daughters sleeping, and Josh has two cats. Yeah. I mean, Makes and sense. Yeah. Temperamental yeah. cats. But, you the, know. The second thing, Tanya, for what it's worth, we would always choose you here at the other show over your your daughter's boyfriend. Every day. Any day. I mean, like, he's nice enough. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, there's only one choice, and it's you, Tanya. Yeah, all, all day, every day. Tanya. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, still don't go above a certain volume. I you know. know. <laughs> don't wake those cats. Don't wake those cats. <laughs> but very cool, though, that you get a little Florida trip, and then you get to bring her right back, and hopefully she stays for a little bit longer than you expect. Yeah. 
No, that's awesome, though. Congratulations. In the proud tradition of all Tanya's, you can hit somebody in the kneecap. Oh, oh Spencer. Okay. Like, she hasn't heard that before. <laughs> Next phone call. Hey, this is Crew Dutler. Um, calling to say hi again. It's been a while. Uh, you guys are doing a good job. Uh, and I wanted to say that you hit the nail on the head when you're talking about Bridgerton and those other shows that they're basically just period piece smut where uh, it makes you feel like you're watching something culturally important, but it really isn't. It's just, you know, side boob and doodidity. Um, so I wanted to give a recommendation for a good TV series that's period piece and culturally important. And that is Turn, Washington Spies. I think it's now on the Roku channel. I just looked it up. It's on the Roku channel. If you want to watch Weird Al and then watch Turn, um, I think that might be the only reason to get the Roku channel. Uh, it's about the spy ring that Washington had during the American Revolution. And it's pretty good, pretty accurate, at least in the first couple seasons. Um, so I highly recommend that. Or if you want to go even older, period piece, another great one is The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Um, so keep up the good work, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, this is Drew again. Feel free to use this voicemail or the other one I just left. Just wanted to leave you another book recommendation, and that is Blue Gemini. I forgot the author, but... It is about the secret military army space program that was going on uh, concurrently with the NASA mission to the moon program. It's a good dad book series, um, uh, very realistic, very, very much feels as if somebody who knew about it at the time wrote this story to tell it in a way that that get past the top secret uh, clearance, security claims. So uh, if you like military, you like spy, espionage, uh, sabotage, and missions to space, uh, the space program, it's a, it's a great series. I liked it a lot, and I think you guys like it too. All right, bye. Okay, first off, uh, Drew, once again, thanks for keeping us cultured with the book recommendations. I mean, obviously, we can get a little too into the weeds with pop culture, and so we do need to be a little bit more um, literate, I think. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. We we need a little more pinkies up in our lives. I, I need to start just reading Brandon Sanderson on repeat. Yeah, not that that's a bad thing. No. Like, no one's going to complain about that. But, yeah, keep sending out the recommendations, and also of the listeners, if you are uh, reading any of these, please let us know. We we do have another show book club that you can join in the other group. Yeah, indeed, it's a it's a chat yeah. that uh, we set up in the uh, in the Facebook chat. Group. Um, also, Drew, uh, thank you for not mincing words about Bridgerton. I think we you know I think we all agree. Josh, I know you were kind of sold on it a little bit, um, but yeah, Spencer, I know you were kind of saying the same thing, where it's just like side boob and nudity, right? Yep. Yeah, with a little class pinkies out. Yeah, that's pinkies out, side boob and nudity. <laughs> uh, that's what I don't think I've ever heard side boob and pinkies out in the same sentence before. <laughs> but honestly, like I've, I've tried again, you know, watching good Charlotte and <laughs> it's, it's not good Charlotte. I, I don't know. I, I, I like the soundtrack. Those Madden Brothers. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> so, what is it? Uh, Queen Charlotte. I don't know. Coldplay. Yeah. Coldplay. <laughs> <laughs> All American rejects. <laughs> Coming out of when we were young, Sweet Charlotte. Is it Sweet Charlotte? What is it? Young Sweet Charlotte? Sweet Caroline. Young ba, ba, ba. What is that stupid Bridgerton spinoff? It's it's Queen Charlotte. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the obvious guess? Yeah. <laughs> Why it, did we go it, but, but no, it's because I can't get out of my head. It's not good Charlotte. But no, the, the only good thing that I like out of the whole thing is the soundtrack. And, and the dude it it's, it's nice because... You know, you you get the classical you know renditions of of current hits, mm -hmm. so that it does well. Sure, I guess. I mean, we had that on a, on a Night's Tale, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so I had but that yeah, in Westworld season one, yeah, which was done very well. 
by the way. Uh, you, you made a recommendation, Drew, about The Last Kingdom. And I don't know if anyone else has seen this. It's on Netflix. There's like six seasons in a movie, which is kind of cute. And uh, Is that the one with Matt Damon? No, that's The Last Duel, which came out two years ago. Um, no, that I one see. is, it's a great movie, but it's also really, really heavy. The Last Kingdom is a series about Vikings in the beginning of the uh, British Empire way back in the day, a thousand years ago. And it is surprisingly good. When I first started watching it, I was like, oh, it's like PG-13 Game of Thrones. And I'm like, eh, who needs it? But the battles in this show are legit. The budget's on the screen and the characters are great. And there's a little bit of history, too. I totally recommend it. So that's a great recommendation. Hmm. If you need a new show with all the other shows going away. Well, that's I was, was going to say, now. with everything going away and then the writer's strike and everything, you know, mm-hmm. we, we probably will need to rely on these recommendations so speaking of um if you guys want me to can i jump through spencer's other door real quick oh yes through my other door come on in (laughs) i don't know i yep i changed my mind i'm done (laughs) josh you want to look this up (laughs) okay (laughs) you don't want to talk about there is a glut of movies coming out in june it seems like every weekend june is a busy month and i think we've kind of been waiting for this uh so hopefully some are good. So I'm going to kind of go through the weekends and we can talk about like you guys specifically what you want to see, what sounds bad, what sounds good. And I also want to hear from the audience what they're looking forward to. So I'm going to go weekend to weekend if that's cool. Mm-hmm. And I may get a little hipster on some of these and may get a little nerdy on others if that's okay. Okay. Now are these theatrical releases? Are the- these- well, there's, there's there's one that's a streaming one, and it's I think coming out the second weekend, and it's Extraction Two. Okay, and that's the uh, you know Netflix big movie. If you want to, I thought Chris Hemsworth was, do that. was done acting. He said he would like to slow it down. I know he said for Thor he wouldn't do it again unless there was like a really good script and a good director. Is he the one that dated Miley Cyrus? No, that that was Liam. Okay, he's taking over for Henry, Henry Cavill in The Witcher, which will never happen because they'll cancel it. But no, they just renewed it for two more seasons. They all look the same. Oh, the Hemsworth brothers. Oh yeah, they all look the mm, same. No okay. at all. And I'm not even not at all. You know, it's funny, like Chris Hemsworth, he's basically a Greek god, right? Even though he's Aussie. But like a lot of women prefer Liam, which is weird. Yeah, that is weird. Like L- Liam looks like the hotels that you prefer, Josh, that he's, he looks like they smell to me. Uh, that's probably why I like him the best. <laughs> he smells like yeah. secondhand smoke. Yeah, exactly. And whatever is on the floor. <laughs> Once again, bed bugs. <laughs> So I'm I'm just going to kind of go through and like weekend to weekend and you guys can tell me maybe, you know, for the audience, what you guys are interested in and yeah, what sounds good, what sounds bad. And maybe I can talk about some of the buzz that we've already already heard about some of these movies. So our first major one, and this is the on the second, and this is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And so this is a part one of the new, well, it's the second part (laughs) uh, of the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse series but it's part one of a sequel it's a two-part movie which is going to be confusing but basically just i'm already lost just know it's animated spider-man part two that's really all you need to know okay and if you love the one at spencer did that come out 2018 or 2019 we were still talking at the time um so 2018 oh so, so 2018 <laughs> that was before the dark days and that movie honestly came it came out of nowhere and i just it, it didn't make it like a ton of money at the box office, but I think since then everyone discovered it and it really has become one of the best Spider-Man movies out there. And it's animated. Is that correct? Yes. Josh, have you not seen the first one? No. Uh, Oh oh, yeah. This is 100% up your alley. Uh, Highly recommend. Like you are not a superhero movie guy. This is your superhero movie because it's a cartoon. No, what it does is it glosses over um, some Easter eggs of previous Spider-Man movies and not like you need to have seen these other movies. It's just like, let's make fun of this series together oh. and then follow follow through some pretty awesome animation. No, that, Josh, okay. because it's animated. I like making fun of superhero movies. So if mm-hmm. that's what they're doing, I'm on board. Yeah, it will get you on board and then it will suck yeah. you into its own You'll story, it. which is great. OK, OK, I'll, I'll have to give it a try. So I will see this movie on Tuesday. Sorry, Spencer. Uh, yeah, it's OK. I get it. I get it. Um, I know. I'm tier three when it comes to movie viewing partners. And I, <laughs> no, tier two? No, You're no, tier two. <laughs> no. And that is okay. That is okay. We all know that it's tier one is any woman can't trying to impress currently. Tier two, Zach and Joel. 
I'm okay with this. I know my place. Tier three, everyone else. Wait, Listen, wait, wait, wait. Where am I then? Listen, I think I think you're at two point five because uh, the, how scared you got at Cocaine Bear, which is not a scary movie. Oh, uh, makes me want to bring you to movies more, Josh. Whereas Spencer, he's so polite that I feel like that's tier two, but you say you're tier three. I don't know. Like he doesn't make a sound at all. Yeah, and he like respects yeah. my space, oh my and we'll gosh. talk about it. Like when we get to the car, it's yeah, it just works. How did you get married, Spencer? Found the right one. <laughs> Okay, so so that's that's our big one. Uh, also, that same weekend is the Boogeyman, which I've seen this movie, and it's like uh, I think it's PG thirteen. It it, the whole thing felt PG thirteen to me. This is based on a, a Stephen King short story, and this really is a story about two sisters dealing with something in the closet, and it is a jump scare type movie that you would watch early two thousands. And really get a kick out of hanging out with your friends and watching a movie like this. It's not going to stay with you, but while you're watching the movie, it's got some good thrills and good practical effects. So, and you didn't take is... me with you to go preview no, this. No, Josh, you would not have dealt with this one. This one would have been too much for you. Yeah, I don't deal well with anything popping out of the closet. So you would have gone cross side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, probably. I, sh- I should have brought you. But yeah. Also, that same day, I just need this is a Kent recommendation. If anyone is like a Sundance geek, like I am, uh, basically a good film geek, like <laughs> I am, what? Um, there's a movie called <laughs> Past Lives, and this is brought to you by A24. And this is a Korean slash uh, American drama. And it is like this love story that spans like two decades. And it is heartbreaking and beautiful. And yeah, that comes out in June 2nd. And if you just need a serious movie in the middle of summer, kind of like a nice steak dinner, go see Past Lives. It's one of the best movies of the year. Yeah, you'll probably cry. Um, it, it's not one that needs to be seen in the theater, but it needs. It, it is one be, that you need to put your phone away for because A, subtitles are in 70% of it, oh. and B, just because the chemistry is fire. And so this is one that you just need to dedicate time to see. I struggle with subtitles because like I'm trying to process the movie and then Mm -hmm. I keep reading it and then I feel like I'm I'm way behind. So then I just make (laughs) up my own plot lines to the movies. Okay. And and then it just derails and then I have to like watch and then I have to like read the the whole outline plot (laughs) on Wikipedia. No, no. I think this is a birth of a new segment. We need to do movie reviews with Josh. Where he writes down what he thought the plot was, and then Kent tells him the real plot. Please. Okay, Josh, we're going to recommend some movies to you that are only subtitled, and you have to review it and tell us what what happened, okay? Okay. I Listeners, if you have if you have foreign films that you want Josh to watch and then review it on the show, please We need share. to start off with, like, Life is Beautiful. Oh, if, <laughs> I'm, I feel a little worried about that. <laughs> I uh, so basically I have to watch these without the subtitles on. No subtitles still because like I just know that you get a little lost. So <laughs> <A> little. <laughs> <laughs> we need some like really really heavy ones. Oh boy, yeah. Okay, so then June 9th we have Transformers: Rise of the Beast, and this is a, a Transformers prequel but sequel to Bumblebee. This takes place in the nineties, and this is basically. Beast Wars combined with the Optimus Prime on Bumble- Bumblebee that we know in this whole intergalactic battle. and Can I be on standby for that one? Oh, is that something you want to see? For Dude, real? I grew up watching Beast Wars. <laughs> I thought nobody wanted to see it. I grew up watching Beast Wars. Meg- that was my introduction to Transformers. Oh, like the bad CG Beast Wars. Rat Tra- Cheetor. Oh, yeah. Roman Hux. Yeah. That was my jam. Listen... It, Sp- Spencer, if I need to pull into my tier three invites, then yes, you can come. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is Megan Fox or like Shia LaBeouf in in? Uh, so Shia LaBeouf was killed off screen in the third one or the fourth one off screen. Oh, and that's uh, but this too is bad. a prequel. This has the guy from um, the Lin Manuel Miranda movie in uh, mm. in the Heights. Mm. He's in this one. Yeah. So, but look, it's a Transformers movie. I think it's just going to be loud and I'm, everything like that. I hope it's kind of hoping that it spins off into its own thing without the Transformers. Yeah. I just want a straight up Beast Wars, not Beast Machines. That spin off. Well, I know you do because uh, is Optimus yeah. Primal <laughs> is the Beast Wars oh. leader. He's voiced by Ron, Ron Perlman. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. So moving on, we're going to skip uh, just one more week and it, we have a huge day on the 16th. And so the biggest movie would be The Flash on June 16th. Not Elemental? 
uh, Elementals released that same day. And so, yeah, that comes out as well. Now, we have to clarify, <laughs> this is starring Ezra Miller, so The Flash is a superhero and not what he does on the weekends. Uh, that as well. So, yeah. So, The Flash, we talked about this a little bit. This will be the thing that kind of... We talked about last week where it will reset everything but somehow give closure while telling a story about bringing back Michael Keaton. Eh, okay, sure. It will be... It's actually tracking to not make a ton of money, which will be crazy if it doesn't make a lot of money. They were originally saying this would be a billion dollar movie. Hmm. Now they're saying it will make 70 million in its first weekend, which is so paltry. Uh, I'm so curious to see what happens here and who they're going to blame. Um, they're going to blame poor marketing, even though they have astroturfed the heck out of reviews for this movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, everyone who's seen it, because they have done fan screenings already this month, and everyone is hyped out of their minds for it because this is... Uh, like we described, nostalgia bait. Oh, yeah. Uh, so let's move on to Ele- Elemental. Josh, is this one you're pretty excited for? Uh, yeah, it's a cartoon, man. Like, yeah. Uh, I actually, well, I've I've really loved the concept art that I've seen mm-hmm. of of this whole movie. Post John Lasseter, this feels kind of like Kmart uh, Inside Out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, same here. Like, it, it that's what I thought it was at first. I thought like it was a sequel or something to Inside Out, but. I I think it looks I mean it looks decent as far as like family movies go. Mm-hmm. I think I think Pixar is well. I mean, Turning Red worked out well for them uh, critically, but I think they're looking to yeah. get their legs underneath them again. Yeah, it's just all through the pandemic they really struggled uh, critically and financially, obviously because everything went to Disney Plus. And so, but they weren't. They're not the studio they once were. I'll say that. No, um, I, I'm trying to even think when the last movie i actually really liked from pixar um finding mm-hmm. uh, finding dory was probably Oof. the last one that i really liked because i i, I yeah. love you know the whole finding nemo and everything right um but uh wayward is it wayward the one with uh, onward onward yeah yeah I, I knew it was some type of adverb <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that one i i I wanted to like, yeah, but that was a struggle, and I think that's kind of where they started going downhill just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm I'm optimistic on on what okay. this will will end up to to be. I can kind of tell you. I feel like I could tell you probably the plot by just seeing. Well, what I've and that's seen. that's the thing. Earlier reviews have said uh, carbon copy, cut and paste for this one. This this feels like a Pixar movie if, yeah. coming from the factory where it's likable, but it's just not challenging mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like they used to be mm-hmm. which honestly for kids i think that's fine yeah a lot of the time so yeah there's that the same day for all those film geeks out there wes anderson is back with asteroid city this is once again on the 16th and this if you've seen the trailer it's wes anderson to the nth degree and he has a style and some people love it some people will probably not see it josh won't see it it's got tom hanks oh it has tom hanks mm-hmm. yep yep i'll move i'll move right along we don't need to hear about that again screw that <laughs> Uh, the next week, there's only really one major movie, and it's uh, Jennifer Lawrence in No Hard Feelings. This is on the 23rd of June, and this is a uh, raunchy comedy with Jennifer Lawrence, I think, trying to find a new genre for herself. I don't get it. Yeah, I, I saw I saw a preview of that, and I'm just, I, it, I don't know. Like, it kind of felt like um, super bad. Yeah. But uh, I, I have no idea, and no like desire to see it yeah I, I don't think really anyone cares at this point i i don't know if crass comedies have kind of gone away i do always want to see good comedies because mm-hmm. i think it's hard to do comedy in the modern era mm-hmm. but this one feels way too uh well, 20 years ago it's the thing i think comedies have moved to prestige television you can get away with a lot more you yeah. got a longer form format sure and nobody's going to theaters to see comedies now which is too bad because that shared experience is something special yeah yeah, I don't disagree, but I just don't think there's been a good comedic film in a long time. Yeah, I'm honestly trying to think of one, and I can't. So, like, I'm it's like pre 2016. Uh, but our last movie to see of June, if you want to or not, this comes out on the 30th, is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh. And this one, I hear reviews are good. Is that sarcasm, sir? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> uh, so this is Indiana Jones five. Disney got real confident and they screened this at the Cannes Film Festival. And granted, when you sh- show things at Cannes, 
there's the real snooty critics that are seeing movies, right? But there's also festival goggles. They, they, and I, this happens to me. You see a movie, no one else can see it for months, and you're like, well, let me tell you, it was breathtaking, blah, blah, blah. This is a movie that sounds exactly like an Indiana Jones sequel 20 years after its time. Uh, this is said to just be fine, like kind of like, uh, man, what was like treasure that should never have been sought for. Basically, this is Indiana Jones being a 80 year old man kind of sitting in the corner with a wisecracking goddaughter. This is a Disney product in 2023. Mm hmm. And I do hope the adventure is fun. I know there's not a lot maybe Harrison Ford can do physically. Oh, he's 80 what? 81? He's 81. Yeah. But I, I do hope that the, I don't know, it doesn't need to tie anything together because this can stand alone for me. I just hope it's a quality experience. I don't think it will be. I think it's going to be the Indiana Jones trilogy for the rest of my life. And if you want to watch good Indiana Jones or good Harrison Ford acting... Go watch Shrinking. It's something his body can handle. Okay. Yeah. So I, I heard something about this movie. Like they're using the, uh, what, the anti-aging CGI or whatever for this. Is that for the, is it for the whole movie? No, there's a, a there's a plot element that would require young Indiana it's, Jones it's to be It's called in the, movie. the Battle of Destiny and it's a time travel device yeah oh okay because I, I, i'm sitting here and i'm thinking i'm like well why are you making it if you have to have like you know like two hours of of young looking indiana jones with the cgi so right i mean i'd still see that movie but uh if it wasn't made by disney anyways i am a little worried that this one will be uh, one of those experiences where people i don't know that they, they may say that the fourth movie yeah we were maybe too hard on Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Is that the one with Shia LaBeouf? Shia LaBeouf, yes. Did he die in that one? No. Um, no, he did not. That's a shame. <laughs> Actually, it'd be kind of funny if they killed him off screen on this one. <laughs> I, I, know, I know things that I can't say. You can say after the show. I'll say after the show. Anyways, so that's our June. I think it starts off pretty massively. I do hope Spider-Man is a huge success. I hope this is the movie of the summer. I will let you guys know it on Tuesday as soon as I see it. Okay. Um, and uh, and we'll talk about it. And maybe even this coming weekend, if we need to see it again, we'll go see it again. So I may need that pick me up. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, I'll have to watch the first one. Yeah, honestly, mm -hmm. you should. Okay, I I, I will. And and you really should. And uh, yeah, let me know your recommendations on uh, subtitled movies. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So yeah, there's that. Um, but with all that said, Josh, take us out. Hey, if uh, guys, if you are listening, thank you. We understand that there are a ton of podcasts out there to choose from. So the fact that you choose to lend us your ears means a lot. Guys, we want to connect with you, whether that's through Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can follow the other show on any of those social media platforms. Additionally, join us in our Facebook group, The Other Group. It's a fun little community that we hope that you'll want to be a part of. If you want to rep the other show, please grab some swag from the other store. We have shirts, hoodies, mugs, and hats available at the other dot show forward slash store. And until June 12th, everything in the store is 15% off. So go grab yourself some other swag. Now, we may be seasoned podcasters, but this is still a fairly new podcast. So please do us a solid by hitting the subscribe button on whatever platform you listen to us on, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and even YouTube. Subscribing helps others find the other show much easier. Also, please leave us a review. We actually do read each and every one even those irrelevant one-star reviews. Now, if leaving a written review isn't necessarily your thing, you can always call my voicemail at 801-508-4989 with that comment, question, complaint, or even suggestion. Again, that phone number is 801-508-4989. But remember, when you're not listening to us, remember, you can listen to me on my other show, the party in the back. You can hear me on my other show, Bacon Cell. And you can hear me on my other show, 